All right, it's your girl Whitney Payton, and I'm here blowing it up with Capital Chaos TV. Yeah. I Man, I'm in Sacktown right now. I'm on tour with Twisted for the most tasteless tour. It's kind of their 20th anniversary for their first record. So I'm excited to be here because it's a big deal. And I'm on tour with these guys and I'm stoked. I've been friends with them for a while. So let's get it. Yeah, I've known Twisted for a while now. It's it's crazy because the first time I ever played a Juggalo show, I had no idea what was going on. I went on stage, there was a bunch of painted faces, and I was like, is this a Kiss concert? What's going on? So um, I was just an opening act, and, and they were like, do you want to perform? It's a hip-hop show. And I was like, yeah, I was taking any show. I had no clue who they were. And then all of a sudden, I've just like really been engulfed in this uh, kind of Juggalo community. I really appreciate them. I just love performing, and I love doing hip-hop. So And these guys are, are down for it. They are very excited. Accepting. They like things that are different. They like things that are theatrical. So I'm with it. Yeah, it's only been about two weeks on this tour. Uh, we have about 60 dates to do um, total. Uh, so let's see. I mean, every every single one has been amazing so far. I haven't had crowds that have been too outrageous yet where I have any insane stories. They've been, you know, uh, really, really energetic. But like as far as hotels, I have insane stories because like two days ago I stayed at a Motel 6, which is not ideal. But sometimes you got to do that on the road. And I woke up and I literally had like hives from like my whole face down my neck on my hands and i saw there's a uh, person on tour who's actually a nurse and he was like yo you have bed bug bites on your face and hands and i was like oh my god i've never had this before so but that's just one of the things that you have to be worried for on tour you're going to a lot of different cities you're staying in a lot of different places you're staying at different hotels and the guys on tour with me were not bitten at all they chose me so it must have j either just been in the bed that i was in or i just have the sweetest blood i'm just gonna go with i'm the sweetest one so i like sacktown it kind of reminds me i'm from philadelphia so philly like the audience is kind of hard to please like people look at you they're kind of like okay do something to impress me like they're kind of tough uh tough crowd so i feel like sacktown is like that in a lot of different ways i feel like people in sacktown really expect greatness like you got to come out there and give it your all to please the people in sacktown and tonight was awesome i wrote a raft on top of the people they had me we were we were white water rapping so I mean, Sackdown was good to me tonight. Yeah, I mean, I dropped an album last year called Firecracker that was 10 tracks, and then I had Tragic Hero approach me and they wanted to sign me as an artist, so they were like, hey, we'd really like to release Firecracker for you because it didn't get the release that it deserved. Like, when I dropped it, I was just doing everything myself out of pocket, I was on tour at the same time, so it was really hard for me to send out the copies and, and do everything I had to do, because literally, I go to the post office myself and I'm like mailing out thousands of copies of this thing, so they were like, we want to re-release it, and I was like, okay, if you're gonna re-release that we're going to make it 21 tracks instead of 10 tracks and make it the pyro edition so the packaging is the coolest thing i've ever had like there's posters inside it fan collage inside it and of course it's 21 tracks i've never had an album that long so it's really sick it's worth it for sure I, I did the album with Matt Good from First to Last. He was the one that produced it. And then there's a song on there that is also produced by Ben Bruce from Asking Alexandria. And there's people on there uh, from I Set to Kill. I have one of the guys from The Misfits who helped engineer one of the songs. There's just numerous bands, The Word Alive. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different artists featured on that album. So it's a good one. Pick it up. 10-6 is when it officially releases. When I first uh, started rapping, I think my biggest influences were Eminem, uh, Lisa Left Eye from TLC, Eve, who's from Philadelphia, Will Smith, who's from Philadelphia. And then as I started doing it and being in kind of both worlds, like the rock world, I like Machine Gun Kelly, I like Tech 9 I kind of consider them like rock rappers in a way. Uh, so those have been really my biggest influences. And I mean, there's just a lot of... Uh, inspiration you can draw from different genres so even though i rap i watch a lot of different rock artists i watch country artists even pop artists and there's just something you can pick up from everybody really yeah i can play a couple instruments i won't say that i'm amazing i can play basic chords on uh, guitar i can play a piano slightly uh, i'd like to get better i've been on tour so it's really hard it's really hard to be practicing and everything but i'd like to get better at numerous instruments and i'd like to get better at just making beats in general and being kind of my own engineer because i've for a long time relied on different engineers which are cool they're they're awesome everyone i've worked with but now i want to start you know in the future i'd love to make some of my own beats for my next record so we'll see maybe i'll be next not dr dre watch <laughs> 
Um, everyone's mad about Bad Baby coming up. Uh, the girl Catch Me Outside getting signed to Atlantic Records. Um, I can't even be mad, you know. I think I don't hate the song that she put out. I think a lot of people are really upset. Do I think she has longevity? I don't know. I don't think, I think a lot of people who come up really, really quickly, it's harder for them to have a very long lasting career. So even though she, she got a record deal and there's a lot of artists that are personally offended, I just, I mean, she was able to go viral and uh, she obviously has people that like her so so we'll see what she does next i mean she's really gonna have to prove herself though with a lot of follow-up singles and just continue being able to be viral which is not an easy thing so so we'll see i'm i'm looking forward to seeing what she can do uh i'll be very surprised if it's not just a flash in the pan thing but i'm not mad about it we'll see what she does for me personally um I haven't had a problem staying sober because I just do not have really an addictive personality, but I can see that a lot of artists really struggle with it. It's, it would be easy. It would be really easy because every night there's fans that are offering you all kinds of things. Like they come up, they're like, you know, weed and drinks is like the number one thing, but you'll have fans come up all the time and they're like, I saw that you were really hype on stage. Do you want some Coke? And I was like, Oh no, I don't, I don't do Coke. And they're like, You've got to, you've got to, because on stage you're so hype and energetic. I'm like, no, I just, I promise that's my real energy. So, I mean, it would be so easy. Every night you would be doing it, you'd get into a routine. So I understand it. Uh, but luckily for me, I've been able to to stay clean. And it's very, very unfortunate when other artists fall into uh, doing drugs because it's a lot of amazing artists that fall into it. And it's heartbreaking because I'm sure it's a really hard thing to come out of. I've seen a lot of friends, you know, ruin their careers. So I think just seeing friends ruin their careers has inspired me to stay as clean as possible. Yeah, I mean, a lot of musicians recently have committed suicide, not just musicians, actors, you know, people in the entertainment industry, because it's easy to, it's easy to feel very alone in entertainment, even though you're surrounded by a lot of people, a lot of people like you, you might have a lot of fans and supporters and you think, you know, maybe they don't really like you or they don't like the real me. And that's kind of how they start to feel alone. And I get it. I get them feeling uh, that depression and loneliness. But uh, unfortunately, I've had friends commit suicide and not necessarily all friends in entertainment because it affects people everywhere. It affects people everywhere. But I really, truly believe that if, you know, my friends who have passed could take it back, they 100 percent would because it's just such a like permanent thing to do for such a fleeting problem, which is usually what it is. So. It's really unfortunate. Um, I wish that, you know, we could we could bring them back so they could realize realize what they did and how many people they affected. And I'm sure it wouldn't have been something that they would have done. I mean, that's that's really how I feel about it. And hopefully they're looking down and they can appreciate everyone that shows love for them and realize what they meant to different people. My sound is like if Machine Gun Kelly, Missy Elliott, and Haley Williams from Paramore just had a love child. And <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of me because I do this like hip hop thing with this like rock attitude and it's just high energy and craziness on stage. Yeah, I mean, right after this tour, I, during this tour, I'm going to be dropping the Firecracker Pyro Edition record. I have several music videos on deck. I just signed a Tragic Hero, so there's a lot going on right now. Next year, I really am trying to get Warp Tour, uh, South by Southwest. There's a lot of different festivals that I hope to play, and I really think we have a good chance. I really think uh, I'd be a great act for Warp Tour, so we'll see if that happens in 2018. Look out for it. Man, well, I always show love to my movement, which is Team Underdog. We do it underdoggy style, you dig? Oh, man. <laughs>